While there's no vaccine for this epidemic, packing your suitcase might just hold the cure. In 2023, the US Surgeon General published an urgent public health advisory requiring immediate action for the epidemic of loneliness. It's as dangerous as smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day, linked to a 50% increased risk of dementia and affects half of all Americans. Whether it's a breakup, death of a loved one, or lack of close and meaningful friendships, loneliness can come in many forms. For me, it was the sudden and unexpected death of my mom. Yet after traveling through 50 countries across all seven continents in my lifetime, I've come to discover one of the most unconventional and uncomfortable solutions to our nation's most acute public health crisis. But for a moment, let's put the suitcase down and pick the briefcase up. The summer morning sun reflects off your freshly shined shoes as you heel toe over the New York City sidewalk. Your brisk pace whisks you into the headquarters of Goldman Sachs, where you grab your morning coffee and sit down at your desk. You pause for a moment to collect yourself before logging in. Wow, a vice president in investment banking at Goldman Sachs, you think to yourself. I've made it. Or have I? 80 to 100 hour work weeks. No time to go on a date, let alone take a vacation. With each promotion, the promise of a more balanced life comes and goes. Nearly a decade on Wall Street and still no change. This was the world I found myself in. Early in my career, after a few years with no meaningful time off, I decided to organize a mini brunch getaway with six other junior bankers while our bosses were across the country at a conference. Hey, while the bosses are away, the juniors shall play. After organizing a couple of these renegade retreat experiences, I learned that the nearly 700 meals and over 50,000 messages I shared with these colleagues in a single year carried a deeper, heartfelt resonance and genuine human connection behind them. If retreats could turn work friends into friend friends, what could they do for seeming strangers outside the office? For over 70 years, psychology has taught us that a sense of belonging is a fundamental human need, as essential as food, water, and shelter. However, what I never learned was how to navigate life when my greatest sense of human belonging suddenly disappeared. The morning sun was shining into my Manhattan studio apartment when I got the news. My sister's worried and frantic voice immediately came through the phone. Something happened during mom's surgery, she said, and she's not waking up. Earlier that morning, my mom went in for a 30-minute outpatient thumb surgery to fix a partially torn ligament. Unable to be aroused after the surgery, she was intubated and rushed to the ER. In the ICU, my mom spent nearly three weeks on life support before passing on. Out of zero to 100 on my fear scale, this was 111. Less than a month after my 28th birthday, I found myself writing my mom's eulogy and carrying her casket to the crematorium, all after an elective thumb procedure. If there was ever a time to need a retreat, this felt like it was it. In the wake of my mom's death, I began to ask myself life's existential question. Who am I? What is my purpose here? If I was suddenly gone tomorrow, would I be fulfilled with the life I lived? And most importantly, what do I really want out of life? When was the last time you asked yourself these questions? In the months that followed, I returned to my meditation practice, which began at the age of five. I grew up in a spiritual family, following Paramahansa Yogananda's path of self-realization fellowship and attending weekly group meditation services. 
However, I veered away from my roots as I focused everything on my career and making lots and lots of money. Yet for the first time in over 23 years, I felt an inner calling during meditation like never before. Every day for three straight months, the message was simple. You need to help people. But I thought I was helping people as a Goldman Sachs banker. Well, helping rich people get richer. This calling was different, though. It was a calling to be of service to a humanity far beyond my microcosm of high finance. Over the course of 2021 and beyond, I was guided by this inner calling to learn dozens of new things that interested me and to help where I was called. I became certified in modalities ranging from life coaching to breath work and body work. Amidst closing over $100 billion of transactions as an investment banker, the level of fulfillment I received from helping people along their healing journey was unlike anything I ever experienced. So, I used my banker brain to calculate my financial runway, then left the prospects of million dollar salaries and managing director titles behind. In a few years since receiving this inner calling, I traveled to well over 100 cities across 15 countries and five continents. I learned from indigenous tribes in the Peruvian Amazon, gave back to women's collectives in Morocco, and explored ancient ruins from Egypt to Mexico. Along the way, I attended more than 15 retreats to aid in my personal healing journey. These unique experiences safely expanded my comfort zone and showed me that people and places are two of the most important teachers and healers in my life. Today, science is beginning to show the very real health benefits of traveling. Until relatively recently, scientists believed that the human brain was unchangeable and only declined with age. However, over six decades of neurological research has shown that if the body is in an enriched environment, like when you are traveling to a new place, the brain can form new synaptic connections and grow. Traveling has also been associated with a decreased risk of both heart disease and depression, while simultaneously enhancing creativity and bringing greater satisfaction than material purchases. But for the nearly 25% of Americans who have never left the country, traveling can feel downright terrifying. This is where trusted guides, expertly designed itineraries, and a group experience through travel retreats can be the real game changer. No trip to Egypt is complete without a visit to one of the most awe-inspiring world wonders. But this isn't any cookie cutter experience. The full moon shines on the Great Pyramid just before dawn on a desolate plateau free of tourists. Inside the king's chamber, you're guided through a private meditation and sound activation with an intimate community of like-minded adventurers. As vibrations ripple through every cell of your body inside this ancient resonance chamber, a sense of regeneration and rejuvenation brings peace and healing to your mind and body. Whether exploring archeological sites or savoring local cuisine, the people and community aspect of travel retreats unlocks new doors of business networking, collaboration, lifelong friendship, and even love. I have learned as an organizer of retreats and experiences that external travel awakens internal realization. Through travel retreats, you not only heal loneliness, but you begin to create transformative communities rooted in genuine human connection and shared experience. Life is often easier than we think it is, if maybe a little bit uncomfortable to take the first step. The solution to America's epidemic of loneliness is no different, and packing your suitcase might just hold the cure. <laughs>